Oh, okay. I've just heard from uh, one of my uh, secret agents that we're all good to go. So I am David Gherkin. I will be hosting this medium day talk on looking in or looking out as two ways of living our lives. Um, I'm going to talk for just a brief while, and then I'm going to open it up to questions. And uh, hold on here. Let me do something. Let's see here. Uh, okay. Um, let me see here about chat. Okay, let's get rocking and rolling. Sorry for the uh, slow start here. Um, so yeah, and you can ask any questions after I'm done chatting. You can ask anything you want. Um, and if you see questions like, why are you bald? Or how many months pregnant are you? That means my kids have figured out a way to get onto this call. And we will ignore that. Okay, uh, so a little bit about me, background. I've been writing on Medium for four years. I write mostly about spiritual stuff, talking about the greats like Ram Das, Eckhart Tolle, Michael Singer, all these great guys. And uh, I was from Newport Beach, California. I went to college back east, then went to Washington, D.C., worked in the crazy world of Washington politics for 15 years, then went to the even crazier world of working in uh, Hollywood as a writer. So uh, did that, and then I sort of was a tough time, tough world out there. As you know, they're all on strike right now. That could have been me. And, uh, but... I just had sort of had it and I was having troubles with just dealing with stuff. So I learned how to meditate to help out. And then I started diving into that and loving it. And I was like, you know what? I love this stuff. I think I'm going to get that going. Um, and sort of my thing that I'm trying to do is just make this more fun and a little less crazy woo woo -y where, you know, not, I love people that are, you know, have the man buns and the, you know, the beads and all the, stuff it's great I, I but a lot of people get sort of weirded out by that and i want to appeal to everybody so they can get in here and do some of this stuff that i've been doing that has been so helpful to me and so many people i know so there you have it all right let's get to what we're talking about there's i basically would say there's a lot of ways you can look at how do you live your life a lot of little ways of looking at it how about this there's this way two choices. You can either one, do what I would say 99% of people do around the world, which is look out to the world to make us feel good inside. What do I mean by that? Well, I am going to, I hope I get that vice president of sales promotion, then I'll really feel good inside. I hope I get that boyfriend that can really just sort of make me feel good about myself and make me feel good inside uh, all the way to tiny little stuff like i'm going to go out for sushi tonight uh, then i'll feel good inside obviously we're not sort of consciously saying that to ourselves but that really is sort of the um what is happening we're trying to look out to the world to sort of cure what ails us inside and the problem is it doesn't work have you noticed we can do this all the time we can do this 24 7 and the problem is it just doesn't work it can for a while you get that job oh my god i'm there i've made it and then the next thing you know i don't know what it is a week a month at most whatever then it's god i'd really love to be president of the company and then you're just right back where you were and you just store still feeling sort of 
like you're missing something inside. Um, or you get the guy and then all of a sudden all those problems that are that you have inside are almost magnified after you get the boyfriend or the girlfriend. So um, it's a problem and it's way it's the way most people live. And I think most people would agree that, you know, life can be pretty frustrating uh, living that way. So um, I have learned a lot. There's that I mentioned Mickey Singer is a great, great teacher. I recommend him to all of you. His books, uh, the most famous is Untethered Soul. Also, The Surrender Experiment. He's got courses online. I was actually just at his uh, place, his center out in Florida like, earlier this week. But he's fantastic. And this is a lot of his ideas here about look out, don't look out, look in. I mean, it's all basic stuff, though. It's stuff that goes back thousands of years, Buddhism, Hinduism. I'm sure there's Christianity involved. There's all it comes from um, all that stuff. But the other alternative is to and it makes a lot of sense if you think about it, instead of going outside to try and cure what ails us inside, which is so hard to do it's so hard to get the world to line up with every, everything we want and need how about you we go inside to work on what ails us inside go directly to it so you might be asking oh well that sounds good what the heck does that mean well for one thing it's, it deals with sort of calming our minds which are just chattering all the time. It's really hard to live a peaceful life with a chattering mind. So what do we do? Meditation is fantastic, but that's not the only thing. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's working on, on quieting yourself down inside is a massively important thing that about working inside. That can be meditating. It can be, you know, obviously working out helps a lot. Going for walks in nature help a lot. And, and if, you know, if you're a really religious person, whether you're Muslim or Christian, Jewish, whatever, praying can be a great thing. You know, it's a very quiet thing. Um, so all sorts of things, but it needs to be sort of something that we, um, that we do and that we really commit ourselves to, because that's what this is really about. It's about shifting our, quote, resources, our energy in life from expending so much trying to get the outside world to sort of fit what we need inside, which can work for a little while. But as we all know, yep, now it's gone. Now I got to keep doing it. Oh, my God. And it's exhausting and it doesn't work. So we're taking that energy and we're shifting it to a different paradigm of let's use that on the, to work on the inside. Let's use that to try the meditations, to do all that work that you can do. And, and there's also a huge one, which is letting go of our stuff. We all have a bunch of stuff, emotional baggage, egoic baggage, you can call it what you want. Um, that sort of directs our lives. And we need to let that go when it comes up. It's just sort of blocking energy down below. That's another big example of working on our insides rather than trying to work outside. You let go. I just wrote a piece about Michelangelo chiseling the David. Well, we've all got a statue of David that inside us. That's perfect. That we just need to keep chiseling away at by letting go of all these things that come up not responding, reacting and getting crazy angry when someone pokes one of our buttons, but just sort of relaxing with it, letting that energy sort of come up and go. Um, so, I mean, that is, that's, that's just about where I wanted to get. And that gets us just sort of where I want to be with this. And now I'm going to open this up. Let's see if this works. Um, to ask a question, wait, uh oh, wait. So, anyone, go ahead. I hope this works. QA. The medium guys told us, look, this is the first time we're doing this. Let's hope, um, you know, there's going to be, let's see, 
review questions. I'm going to just try and. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that and just hopefully um, you all can get a question in. Hopefully this will work. Let me um, let me see if uh, wait. I'm trying to see from one of my secret agents whether this is working here. Ask. Uh, Okay, so let's see, where are the questions? I am trying to find where the questions are coming in. Um, oh, here we go. Um, okay, one question from the great Fred Hatfield. What has helped keep you on the path for four years? Well, uh, I would say it is more like 10 years. I've been writing on Medium for four, but um, I'll be honest, it has really mostly been how much uh, value I've gotten out of this. I mean, it's 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 so hard to even put in words because it's it's just priceless the what what one gets by sort of calming the mind and in my case you know we all have our things i think i was just born this way i was born unbelievably impatient i have three kids and you know, if any of you parents out there will know that nothing tests one's patience more than kids. You know, if you, your daughter is four years old and you got to get her to school and she's got five minutes to get there or the doors close or something and she's saying, no, I'm not going to wear those shoes. <laughs> if you go crazy and just lose it, you're not going to get her to do what you need her to do. So you have to learn how to be patient. Well, this stuff has really helped me with that. Just becoming so much more present and not sort of reacting with fury, but rather with some level of patience. Um, so, uh, so anyway, I mean, what's helped me keep me on the path, Fred, is just how i mean it, it's it, it it would be almost like you know someone who was really 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 overweight and lost a ton of weight and they must feel just physically so much better and you ask them what keeps you on the path well they just feel a heck of a lot better and that's how i look at it so um we've got a question from rick um rick asks how would you define mindfulness good question and first of all i have to say that mindfulness just the actual word itself is my least favorite word and the reason is it makes no sense because mindful full your mind being full is exactly what you don't want um mindfulness is about sort of draining your mind and calming your mind of all the little traffic that's going on in there with all your thoughts but what is it mindfulness really is just it, it is our being present for the moments in our lives okay so if you are for example it in the grocery store line and there's three people ahead of you and you're looking around and you're thinking about oh maybe oh my god this checkout lady is so unbelievably slow i just want to go wring her neck or i can't believe what my boss said to me right when i was leaving work today oh my god those are examples of not being 
where you are at the moment. You are not in line. You are in your head somewhere. So the goal of really a lot of this stuff that I'm working on, and I hope a lot of you are too, is to, um, is to be present because that's where life occurs. Life has never and will never occur anywhere other than in the moment. It can't occur five minutes ago and it can't occur 10 minutes from now. It's happening now. So, um, um, hold on one second here. It's, um, it's, it, it's just, it, it gives us so much power when we are in the moment rather than stuck in our heads. Um, and this is no more, we're more important. Let's just take something that most people can relate to a relationship where your spouse, your significant other, whatever it is, you, they do something that really angers you and it brings up this anger inside that just wants to really come out. And a lot of times it does come out as just screaming and yelling and who knows, hopefully not worse than that. But um, what mindfulness would be is just sort of calming down a little bit because that reactivity of anger is just coming straight from the ego. It's not anything that's present moment oriented. It's, it's just a reaction rather than taking a pause for at least for four or five seconds. And then um, responding with not, oh, not pushing it down and saying, oh, you know, that, you, what you said is fine, that's okay. That's just denial and that doesn't work. That makes things worse on the long term. You don't wanna be dishonest, but you just wanna respond from a place of presence rather than reactivity. So mindfulness is just an absolutely um, just incredibly important thing to do. Um, let's take a look at some of these other things here. Let me see this. We have Daniel Smith. We are conditioned in the West to seek success, material or otherwise, in the world. We confuse academic or financial success with happiness when, in fact, some of the most intelligent, wealthy people are, in fact, miserable. Couldn't agree more. How do we lose this innate conditioning and surrender to what is and be content with our lot? It's a great question, Daniel, and it really gets to the heart of all this stuff. Um, but I'll start off by saying, because I, I know some business people that I've worked with who are successful and they're uh, one of whom was very direct with me saying, now, if I do this stuff, am I going to lose my edge? Um, meaning, am I going to lose being able to be a big success? So what I want to point out is that one can be unbelievably um, wealthy and successful and do this stuff. It, this doesn't preclude that. And, in, and then what I always tell people is I think it increases one's chances in many ways. Um, the ability to achieve a lot in the traditional sense when we are present and we've let go of a lot of our stuff. Why? Because the genius within all of us, which I think you all know about to some degree. We all have it. It's just that it gets blocked by all that stuff that's flying around. And so once we can sort of clear that away, maybe this will clear it, make it a little clearer. We, we increase our ability to quote, get in the zone. The zone in sports is when you're just all over it. You can be in the zone writing music. You can be in the zone, you know, writing a great business memo at work. Um, your, 
your work product and whatever you do in life is going to be markedly better the more present you are with all this stuff and the more you as daniel would say surrender to what is and be content with our lot um the question though is how do we lose this innate conditioning well as i said earlier you start letting go that's it you start letting go of this stuff that you've accumulated over your life um you know, all, all the stuff, the insecurities, the angers, the jealousies, when they come up, you just, it's literally, it's like they're stuck down there. It's energy stuck down below that just when you, when it comes up, if you relax with it and don't fight with it, don't ignore it because that's not it either. You just sort of be present with it and sort of let it come up. That's, that's how we lose that conditioning and we just keep doing that in addition to just sort of working on the whole thing with getting quiet inside and all those kinds of good things um so um good question daniel ellen asks what if the outside world is really awful like being stuck working in a factory for 12 hours a day in heat and fluorescent lights and horrible noise. Well, that's a that's a great question. Um, it, it it obviously is harder, but um, I think the same applies. You you're 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 dealing with some adversity and the best way of dealing with it is to work on being present with it rather than fighting it and resisting it um now i don't have an answer to uh if you're a ukrainian kid who has been um you know uh kidnapped by the russians and you are you know, stuck away from from home. And I mean, the, the, some of the horrible things in life, I think it was, um, I think it was Voltaire, the great French philosopher who said he learned so much about everything, all of his work and his philosophies and all this stuff. And he had a long life, but at the end of it, he did say the one thing he just never could figure out was evil. And so, um, that is something I would have to sort of agree with. Sometimes it's, you know, the world can be awful. Um, but the best way for us to deal with it is from a place of strength. That's a little bit different from Ellen's question, but as far as if your life isn't awful, but you see so much awful stuff out there and all they all say this Ram Dass, Mickey Singer, Eckhart, everybody all say the same thing that it's not, um, you are no good in helping anybody if you can't handle it. So um, Mickey comes up with, this is you know, sort of a smallish example, but you know, he says, if, if you are afraid of blood, you are no help at a car accident scene you know you're just not going to bail it out so the point being we have to sort of rise above and be able to handle it whatever the situation is the, the global warming the war in ukraine there's all sorts of things going on and we need to sort of be able to handle all that um oh I think I just answered Rick's question. How do you avoid letting world events like climate change, mass shootings? Uh, how do you let it not affect you? Well, I think I just sort of answered that one. Um, we have another question here. Let's see here. Let's see. 
How do you not get driven crazy or make peace with all the things you can't control? Well, great question. And the answer is there is so much going on that we, we and we have nothing to do with it. As Mickey Singer would say, this universe has been around for 13 billion years. And there's all these things that have come before us that have created the moments in front of us. And for us to try and, uh, it, it really comes down to a question of control. You just have to surrender to the fact that the world is not in your control. There's so much that you just, and it's so liberating when we do that unbelievably liberating when we just i know it's so un-american to just give up to just surrender well that doesn't mean i'm throwing in the white flag and giving up it's really quite the opposite it's just okay stuff happens and i am going to accept it's about acceptance i just wrote a piece about this this is probably the number one thing that helps me in my spiritual pursuits in my own life is this whole teaching about just accepting rather than resisting. So when all the crazy things out of our control, any one of them, I don't care what it is, you get a flat tire. I, uh, I was flying back from Florida from Mickey's thing the other night and I, I didn't, I missed my connecting flight and I was maybe going to have to spend the night course that's a small example but I just was working so hard on you know 10 years ago or something I would have been just oh god I hate American Airlines oh they're the worst oh god I just want to oh. and I didn't I just sort of sat there and I just sort of I felt some of the anger and some of the stuff but I sort of leaned away and I just was sort of present with it and I accepted it. I was just like, okay. And then I went to the Mickey thing of you got to be able to handle it. I can handle staying a night in a frigging hotel. I didn't have a huge meeting the next morning. All I would have been doing 10 years ago is just sort of moaning and complaining about it. And it doesn't help. You know, so that's a key thing for people to realize is acceptance of what has happened is so unbelievably helpful and, and, and has a market, markedly healthy salutary effect on our entire being when we start just saying, okay, that happened. And guess what? It happened, okay? There's nothing you can do to make something unhappen. So if you're gonna get all mad and everything about it, you're, you're just basically screwing yourself over. Um, and so there's a lot of benefit to just working on that working on accepting rather than resisting everything. God, why is this line so long? God, why is there traffic? You know, it doesn't mean you like it. You don't like it. I didn't like it if my flight got canceled and I couldn't and I had to spend the night. But there's a difference between resisting and really just sort of causing yourself extra angst in life and accepting and saying, and it takes practice, 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 practice. You got to practice. And before you practice, you have to be able to, you have to commit to it because why would you practice something you're not committed to? Well, I see that it's three o'clock. I don't really know if I even lost you right now, but I don't, I am just going to say thank you for whoever tuned in. I couldn't see any of you, unfortunately, but uh, thank you. Read my stuff on medium. Um, and um Hope you have a great weekend. Bye-bye.